Welcome to topic 8 in which we're going to look at Raman rotation spectroscopy. So in the last topic we looked at Raman scattering processes in general and we can ne we're now going to start applying them to specific, specific types of spectroscopy. So here, rotation spectroscopy. To work out what a Raman spe rotation spectrum looks like and in order to be able to extract useful information from it we need to know what the selection rules are. As always, we've got a global selection rule and a specific selection rule. The global selection rule for Raman processes is that the scattering molecule must be anisotropically polarizable. This means that the polarizability of the molecule is different in different directions. So if we had, for example, a diatomic molecule aligned with the electric field, we could imagine that the electron density will be pushed along this electric field. If, on the other hand, we had the electric field is perpendicular to the diatomic molecule, then the electron distribution would be displaced along this direction. We can see the, the, the force required or the, um, the energy required to di displace this um, electron density will be different in the different directions, basically because the electron density distribution is not spherical, is not isotropic. The specific selection rule for this, um, as scattering can be seen as a two-photon two photon process, we have delta J is equal to zero or plus or minus two. Have a think about where these delta J values come from. So we have a Raman rotation spectrum which will look like this. We've got an intense Rayleigh peak. This is where delta J is equal to zero and this is in the middle of the spectrum. You'll notice in Raman spectra we often have the change in wave number at the, across the x-axis rather than a wave number. And this is because we're looking at changes in energy with respect to the original incoming photon. To the negative change in wave number, so this is when energy is transferred um, from the, the light to the molecule, meaning the light scattered has lower energy than the incoming light, we have the Stokes transitions. So this is when we have a transition from a, um, a rotational state with J double primed up to a rotational state of J primed, where the initial state is J and the final state is J plus 2. So this is the delta J equals plus 2 side of the spectrum. On the other side, we have the anti-Stokes transitions. So this is where we go from a quantum rotational state with quantum number j to a rotational state with quantum number j minus 2. The intensities of the, the various bands are governed by the populations of the, of the initial states. So we can see this characteristic um, curve that we saw also in the rotation absorption spectroscopy. One other interesting thing to note here is that the Stokes lines are more generally more intense than the anti-Stokes lines. Let's have a closer look at the wave numbers of the Stokes lines. So for the Stokes transition, we're going from J from the quantum number J to the quantum number J plus 2. We can work out what the rotational term for a level with ro quantum rotational number j is from this expression. We've seen that before. So we can now build up a table of various j double primed and j primed values. So in this table the first line is the Rayleigh peak. So we have the transition wave number um, is 0 centimeters to the minus 1. If we're going from j double primed equals 0 to j primed equals 2, we can work out the initial and final um, energies and work out the difference and we get 6b. We can fill in the rest of these, this table and you can see we have values 10b, 14b, 18b and 22b and so on. So if we look at these values we can see between the Rayleigh peak and the first peak in the Stokes band there's a gap of 6b whereas between all the subsequent peaks there's a gap of 4b. So this means we can automatically work out um, where, where the lines are going to come in a spectrum. And once we know where the lines are in a spectrum, if we measure a spectrum, we can get the rotational constant B. Some homework for you is to show 
that the general transition wave number for the Stokes lines can be written using this expression here. And that's the end of topic 8.